Look at this. We're looking at the race cards here with Neil Phillips, the wine tip. So just to remind ourselves what's running here today, it's a really good card here this afternoon. Once the charity race is done and dusted at 12.15, the proper professional racing begins at 1 o'clock. We start off with a terrific novice chase, Neil, don't we? How are you anyway? Well, I'm very well, thanks, Mike. I'm looking forward to this wonderful racing. What a great card we've got and a fantastic really? card tomorrow as well. Yeah. Lots of familiar names here today and lots of good form lines to come out of today's racing for sure. You're right there. I thought there was a, a, an eye on the future today, Neil, isn't there? Particularly in that novice chase, Sizing Tennessee, Stern Rubin. They look like nice chasers for the future, don't they? They are very much indeed. I mean, Sizing Ten Tennessee tipped up last time, looked like he was going to win. Got a fantastic chance today, but I just can't ignore Stern Rubin. I've been down here when he dead heated in the hurdle race yes. here. We know how tenacious he is, and we know how much he likes Ascot. So I'm actually just going to go for Stern Rubin ahead of Sizing Tennessee. But I think actually could do a bit of a forecast there, can we? A little reverse forecast job. Do that as well. From a forerunner field, we're taking <laughs> yeah, a risk yeah, there, aren't we? We are. We're taking <laughs> really going out there, ladies and gentlemen, on well, the first race. I remember, I remember that dead heat, though. It was the, the, the Christmas hurdle, wasn't it, a couple of seasons ago? It was a fantastic race. I was commentating that day. Tell us about the rest of the car. What takes your eye? Well, certainly later on, actually, we're going on in the 315. I mean, certainly race moving later on there. Anthony. Anthony was running here at the last meeting. I really fancied him that day and actually didn't jump quite as smoothly as he normally does. Apparently the saddle slipped as well, but I think he's got a cracking chance in the 315. I really do. He's, he's the nap. He's the nap of the day. The wine tipster's nap of the day is Anthony in the 315. Now, if he jumps better than he did last time, we know he likes Ascot. We know he's won, he's won here before. He's very effective round here. And obviously with Jamie Moore on the plate, good jockey, knows him very well. Good yeah. chance today. Gary Moore's horses are running really well right now too, aren't they? That's yeah. important. Yes, it's a very important. In actual fact, you know, looking, for example, today, going back to the first race, Stern Rubin, Philip Hobbs, mm -hmm. trainer in form. Mm -hmm. This factor is all really important. You know, these kind of variables, these are the sort of pieces you need to bring in when you're assessing the card. I'm about to mark the card in a few minutes, and those are the sort of areas I'm going to talk about, aren't they? Trainer form, really important. Well, Hobbs is in great form, you're right. But it's funny that uh, there's a tendency these days, Neil, sometimes to have the most valuable race of the day as the last race, and in fact, that's what we're doing today. The Coots Handicap Hurdle at 3.50 is very competitive. I thought Midnight Maestro was interesting here. And why, why, yeah, I mean, certainly Midnight Maestro, yeah. very competitive, as you say, Mike. I mean, this is the most competitive race of the day. Loads of chances here, and if you look at the spread of all the tips is here today, we've got a lot of horses in this field that are absolutely fancied. I might take you on, actually, with Midnight Maestro, because it's always good. We don't really tipping the same horses, do we? A test for me, number eight. Had some... Good runs of the jumps, came off there, had a bit of a break, came back on the flat. Little warm up on the flat there, and I think a test number eight in that race is the one for me in that very competitive contest. And, and away from the horses today, what are you up to, Neil? Because you're always busy. Well, I'm always busy, Mike. It's great to be busy. Hashtag yeah. love my job. Yeah. And here we are at the Prince's Countryside Fund day. Here we are at the theatre here. We've got some wonderful demos came out. I'm, hey, first of all, I'm going to be marking the card, so that's going to be <laughs> exciting. But also we've got the Rare Breeds Survival Trust here today talking about ideas for Christmas. How are we going to support them as well? Alan Titchmarsh is coming in today, and I've always wanted to meet Alan. You know, my first job was actually working at a garden centre. There so there you go. We've got common ground. <laughs> We've got common ground. Hey, I like it. Uh, but actually, we know with Alan, it's you know his great experience. But also, look at the number of books he's written. Please come and join us because we're going to do that as a Q and A. You know, take the opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, to ask Alan some questions. He's such a nice guy. What time are you doing that and where will it be? Here? So it's going to be right here, so everything's taking place here. So 10 minutes past one, we'll have Alan Tishmarsh here today. Yeah. Great, great opportunity to have a Q&A with Alan. Meet the guy, wonderful man, and the ambassador for the Prince, uh, Prince's Countryside Fund Trust as well. Mm -hmm. And also, I'd say, for those of you who like a little tipple, we have Pier Paolo coming along today from Waitrose to just sample a few wines with you, give you a few tips for Christmas. And, and he's also a master of wine. Yeah. Absolutely, very important. Special guy, ladies and gentlemen, only about 330 masters of wine from around the world. Very, very difficult exam to get, I tell you that. Uh, a lot of tasting, a lot of work behind the scenes there, and actually the pass rate is a very, very low pass rate. So anybody who's a master of wine has done brilliantly. And I'd also mention at the end of the day, sort of 220 in our last demo we have here, we've got the ultimate cheese board because right. Christmas is coming. We think about cheese. We should think about cheese all year round. I right. do. But certainly Mark Spitz Tucker as well from David Stowe running through some great ideas in terms of how you can use their cheeses for Christmas. Brilliant. Neil, brilliant. Loves his job, hashtag. Great <laughs> to see you. Thanks, Mike. We'll Have see you later day. on. We will do.